Thank you, Chairman. Over here, Mr. Secretary. Hey, How are you doing today? Um, switching gears away from the Project IDEA MHMR angle, I, I know that Department of Drug and Alcohol handles most of the opioid stuff, but there is involvement from DHS, particularly in the transport portion. Here's what we're running into, Secretary, and we've got a very, very rural area served by one ambulance service that covers a staggering amount of square mileage. Because of how the Good Samaritan language was written by this legislature, and just to give you a little forethought, I'm going to try to change this. Mm -hmm. Whenever an ambulance crew is scrambled out to apply Narcan to a person who is overdosing and dying, part of the protocol is observation for four hours for that person receiving the Narcan. Where we made the mistake is we made it possible for that person to deny an ambulance ride to the hospital where that observation should take place. The hospitals will probably object to sitting there looking at a recovering overdose addict. But in the meantime, what's happening is we are scrambling ambulance crews out to administer Narcan for which they receive no recompense. And basically, we're driving them into bankruptcy. Just a heads up. I'm going to try to change that. My question is, since we have so many needs in DHS, what type of downrange performance indicators are we using? Specifically, I'd be very curious as to see how many people who have made it onto the ID list, who are no longer waiting, who have passed and opened up additional spaces for the waiting list. I'm sorry, the, okay, could, I, I'm sorry, could you repeat okay. your question? What, what I'm asking is, what, how do we measure our performance downrange? For, for, all I, the, for all the money we put into these programs, what are we using as performance indicators? So uh, the department has, uh, has a multitude of performance indicators that it uses. I couldn't, not especially not in five minutes, couldn't go through all of them. I can tell you the approach we take to measuring our performance overall. We have, uh, some primary areas or goals that we have, they are uh, providing access to higher quality services, serving more people in the community, increasing employment options for the people we serve, uh, maximizing program integrity, and improving customer service. Now, the way that we deal with all of those, those five areas, and when you're talking about an agency that's uh, of the scope of DHS, is not to focus on a particular um, program office or, or a particular program, but to look at the outcomes we get. So the outcomes we get for kids, the outcomes we get for seniors. And the primary way we do that is something called PeopleStat. You may be familiar with um, city stat or uh, comp stat or state stat or the other states have used. We call it people stat because we're the Department of Human Services. And basically every Tuesday morning, we go through a process of looking at data measures for all of the outcomes we want to get. Are we moving folks or how long are kids spending in secure facilities when they don't need to be there? How many folks have made the transition from welfare to work? Uh, what kind of outcomes are we getting for the Medicaid program? Are we improving people's health? Are people with chronic conditions, um, are they getting better? Are the Mr. Do folks have access to dental care? Not, not to interrupt, but my time is limited. You just yes. hit on one of the ones I have a specific question about. What exactly compromise, what, what consists, what makes up chronic care? Does drug abuse fall into that category? So I think drug abuse is a, or substance use disorder is a, is a chronic illness. There are things that we look at in terms of our ability to provide treatment to folks, our ability to have, uh, when folks do present to us with uh, substance use disorders, what kind of care they get. Um, there's a, a multitude of measures, and a lot of them go through the people staff process, some go through other things. That, that gets to the crux, and I know I'm close on time. I don't see my light yet. We have these little red. <laughs> oh, there, oh, there you go, okay. Um, You're still green if that helps. Here's, I'm, okay. I'm just going to get down to it, and I don't know okay. if this is for you or whoever the new secretary is of drug and alcohol. How do we measure people coming off of Narcan and behavioral treatment program for successful withdrawal of opioid abuse? So I think that when you look at uh, something like a substance use disorder, I'm not sure that... Uh, 
the appropriate thing to look at, or the only thing to look at, is the number of folks who are revived with Narcan who, uh, who are in recovery and never relapse. Uh, substance use disorder is a chronic disease. Um, while uh, the goal is always to get people to recover, we know that relapse is part of that. So there are folks who are revived with Narcan who will relapse. That is just the nature of what we do. Um, I think when you look at Narcan, it's primarily to save people who are about to die. Ultimately, though, I think when you're looking at treatment that folks get into, it's reasonable to look at um, folks who, how much they complete treatment whether they do relapse and, uh, and the long-term outcome for them. But I, I just would be remiss if I didn't point out that as a chronic illness, which is what a substance use disorder is, that relapse is unfortunately part of that process. That's unfortunately accurate. I would disagree. I would say it's a voluntary disease. Nobody is born with this. At some point, they choose to So do it. I think it's important. Well, I think that's one place that, and I, I'm, I'm sorry, Chairman Seller, I have to answer this question. I think that when you look at medical evidence, you look what doctors say, what evidence-based practice say, it is not a moral failing for a substance use disorder. It is a disease. There are folks, there are genetic predispositions to it. There are issues that uh, right. folks have to deal with their entire life. So any... Um, any inference that there are folks who are choosing uh, to, to suffer from the disease of addiction is something that I think is belied by medical evidence. And I think that if I don't have time to talk about it now, I'd love to come have some doctors and some folks talk to you about the realities of addiction and what people go through. And I'd love to have that conversation with you either here or in your office when that's okay. possible.